resurrected Savior, Redeemer, Healer, Deliverer. A shout of hallelujah. Now with a clap and a shout of hallelujah unto God and a jumping of your feet. Come on now, shout hallelujah. Amen. He's no longer here. He's risen. Go tell it everywhere. That's the reason we live. He's not there anymore. You'll never be found among the dead anymore. Why seek ye the living among the dead? Why seek ye the delivered among the captives? Why seek ye the healthy among the sickly? Why seek ye the, the, the victorious among the defeated? Why seek ye the rich among the poor? Every negative position of anyone under the sound of my voice is changing supernaturally this morning. Amen. Father, thank you, thank you for the opportunity to be in your presence you, and to be partakers of this great resurrection celebration. Receive our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Let your word go forth this morning. Amen. Let it communicate the resurrection power. Amen. Let it change everyone's position supernaturally. Amen. And take all the glory. Hallelujah. In Jesus precious name. Amen. Thank you Jesus. Thank you. One more time. Happy. Resurrection. Celebration. To all members of the winners family. Please you may be seated. Help me congratulate your neighbor. It's of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. His compassion is filled all day and new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm he that was dead. And behold, I live. And I live forevermore. And have the keys of hell and of death. I'll be sharing with us on what is captioned here. Unveiling the blessings that the resurrection of Christ offers. God has something to say. God has something to say. I will listen. Pay full attention for God. My God has something to say, God. Hallelujah, God. I will listen, pay full attention. My God has something to say, God. God has something to say. I will listen. My God has something to say. God. Hey, God has something to say. I will listen and pay full attention for God. Something to say. God has something to say. God has something to say. I will listen and pay full attention for God has something to say. The entrance of His word gives light. And it gives understanding to the simple. The Lord sent a word into Jacob. It lighted upon the whole of Israel. 
one genuine encounter with the world is worth much more than a lifetime of effort. Yes, sir. If you hearken to my voice, observe to do what I tell you to do, I'll set you on high above all nations of the earth. There are things you hear, there are things you receive and understand that just changes your life 360 degrees. Just turn it around 360 degrees. Blessed be the day when I saw the Holy Ghost as a person. And I put him to work the same day. And he's been working for me ever since that time. I had the voice of the Holy Spirit for the first time when I was 22. Praise God. Hallelujah. Go forward. Make a left. Make a left. And he guided me by himself to where I was going without a human aid. You are catching something this morning. Yes. That will change your story forever. Amen. What makes resurrection a great celebration is that it comes down with gifts for men and women. Oh my God. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 8. The Bible says. Wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Resurrection is a celebration of the distribution of gifts from heaven. Amen. Distribution of gifts from heaven. Amen. It's a celebration of distribution of gifts from heaven. Amen. When Christ was born, men brought gifts to him. But when he rose from the dead, he brought gifts for men. Amen. 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 Mary Magdalene and the others took spices, frankincense. They went there. They couldn't find them. Yes, he didn't come to receive from anybody. He came to give to everybody. Hallelujah. That's what makes resurrection a great celebration. Yes, in fact, the greatest celebration in Christendom. It is what ratifies our redemption. It's what gives value to our faith. It's what authenticates and validates our faith. And it's not what to pray for, it's what to discover. That I may know him. And the power of his resurrection is something to discover. Paul said that the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened, that we may know what is the riches of his glory. Amen. And to know his mighty power, according to the power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. So it's a thing to discover. We can't manifest the gifts of resurrection without a discovery of them. Amen. You, you can't. Let's look at the following direct blessings or gifts. That came along with the resurrected Christ. One we discover that. Resurrection is what establishes the credibility of our faith. 1 Corinthians 15, 7. 15, 17. Yeah, and if Christ be not raised, your faith and my faith is vain and we are yet in our sin. That implies that resurrection is what 
gives credibility to our faith. The fact that Christ is risen is beyond all iota of doubt. His word is still working today. The word of God that lives and abides forever. First Peter 1 Peter 1.23 I mean that was dead, but now I'm alive, and I live forevermore, and I have the keys of hell and of death. Revelation 1, 18. Number two, it is resurrection that establishes our justification from sin. Romans chapter 4. And verse 25. Christ was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. In his resurrection lies our justification. In his resurrection lies our justification. It's a mystery. If you read that from verse 22 of Romans chapter 4, we follow through with this. And therefore it was imputed to Abraham for righteousness. Now, now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him. But for us also, to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. And then 25 that we read earlier, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. The book of Psalms chapter 32, verse 1 and 2, it said, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven and whose sin is covered. It said, Blessed is the man to whom the Lord imputed not iniquity and in whose spirit there is no guy. That's what resurrection offers in prophecy. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In Psalm 130, verses 3 and 4, he said, If thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? But there is forgiveness with thee, Hallelujah. that thou mayest be feared. That's what resurrection offers us. Amen. Amen. It offers us free justification. Now being freely justified by the blood of Jesus, we have peace with God. Free justification through the mystery of resurrection. Number three, resurrection establishes our membership of the household of God. Establishes our membership of the household. What a honor. What a honor that is. Amen. Amen. What a honor that is for us. Ephesians chapter 1, I mean chapter 2 verse 19. The Bible says, Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. So we are now members of the household of God. Household of God. In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10 and 11, it said, For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things, and bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For both he that sanctifieth and they that are sanctified are all one, all of one, for which cause is not ashamed to call them brethren. Amen. So we come into the same lineage with Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We are now hearers of God. Yes, sir. Yes. And joined hearers with Jesus Christ. Amen. Romans 8 and verse 17. So we are members of his own household. Now the question is, what is in there for us? Blessed is a man whom thou choosest, whom thou causest. 
to approach unto thee that he may dwell in thy court. Psalm 65 verse 4. They shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house, even of thy holy temple. So membership of his household gets you to enjoy the goodness of his house. The goodness of his house. Glory to God. To be satisfied with the goodness of his house. A choir sings this song. Satis, satis, is this satisfied? So satisfied. So satisfied. Don't you love that? So satisfied. So satisfied. Since I met Jesus, I'm so satisfied. Come on, sing it again. So satisfied. So satisfied. Since I met Jesus, I'm so satisfied. So satisfied since I met Jesus. I'm so satisfied. One more time, So satisfied. So satisfied since I met Jesus. I'm so satisfied. Give him a smile. So satisfied. So satisfied since I met Jesus. I'm so satisfied. Amen. Come on, give him praise. Fifty-one years ago, I met Jesus. Oh man. He gave a strong piano into my life before I ever knew the meaning of trouble. So satisfied. Thank you, Jesus. Where would I have been? I don't know about you. Without Jesus. Perhaps I would have been eaten all by the wicked. But I escaped. <laughs> I escaped. It's one of the greatest honors to be called a member of God's household. You won't miss your place. Number four, resurrection establishes our open access to the revelations of the truth. I've said it before, but next to salvation, the greatest asset of a believer is revelation. Every revelation of the truth steers a revolution. A dramatic change of position. Every revelation is revolutionary in nature. When Jesus yielded up the ghost, the veil in the temple was torn in twain, providing open access for all into the treasures that are hid in the Holy of Holies. Amen. Amen. Which includes the golden pot that has manna in it. So, whatever it cooks is golden. Amen. 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 And the tables of the covenant that shows you what to do to assess the provisions that are available to you. What to do to take delivery of them. And the rod of Aaron that burden. Everything lives. In the Holy of Holies. Dryness ends. 
the rod of Aaron that birth. The rod of Aaron that birth. Thank you, Jesus. When Jesus rose from the dead, the Bible says in Luke 24, verse 45, then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. That is a raw fulfillment of the tearing of the veil into two, providing access to everybody into the treasures of life. Our revolutionary is revelation. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 to 3. He said, Arise, shine, for thy light is come. Revelation is assessing the light of the world. The entrance of the world giveth light and it gives understanding to the simple. Psalm 119 verse 130. Arise, shine as revelation comes true and the glory of the Lord shall be risen upon you. Darkness will cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise by revelation upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come unto thy light and kings to the brightness of your rising. And they shall begin to say, who are these that fly as a cloud? Verse 8. And as the doves to their windows. And verse 22. A little one by revelation shall become a thousand. And a small one, a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten these in this time. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's how revolutionary every true revelation can be. It changes people's position supernaturally. They have to look at you twice whether you are the same person. Your life does not follow a process of progression. No, no. Light is sweet. It's a beautiful thing for the eyes to behold the sun. But you see what I'm saying is this. It's as he rose from the dead that our spiritual understanding comes to life. That's how resurrection grants us open access into realms of revelation. Thank you, Jesus. Number five. Revelation quickens our mortal bodies unto health and vitality. If the spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. Romans 8, 11, He that raised Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by spirit that dwelleth in you. So the spirit that raised Christ from the dead Quickens our mortal bodies. Steers a new life in it. Steers health and vitality. Establishes immunity against all satanic oppressions and afflictions. Offers strength, health, and vitality. Glory to God. That's one of the gifts of resurrection. The quickening of our mortal bodies. The coming alive anew of our mortal bodies. Therefore, everyone whose body may be ravaged with any sickness or disease under the sound of my voice across the nations of the world be quickened supernaturally. There are spiritual bodies and there are natural bodies. There are bodies terrestrial and there are bodies celestial. What resurrection 
offers is the turning of our natural bodies into spiritual bodies. The turn of our terrestrial body into celestial bodies. You say, what do you mean? Well, say, what does the Bible mean? The Bible means that not everybody on the earth is carrying natural body. You say, how do you dare say that? Now, ask Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego if you make heaven. Because you find them there. If you make heaven, ask them. <laughs> Amen. They carried a yielded body. Yielded body is not the regular body. A yielded body that nature of fire had no power over. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So I can't have problem believing the historical uh, documentation of John the Beloved that they threw him into boiling oil in a drum and he will not die. So they banished him to the ice of Patmos because he was a, a, a joji. <laughs> Amen. He was just there same visions and visions and visions. Amen. I was sending those things back to town that I'm still here. So there are yielded bodies. Daniel chapter 3, people that are on the screen, please come on there. Now, now, you see, and the princes and the governors and captains and kings, counselors being gathered together, saw this man upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was an heir of their head sage, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had ever passed on them. And you hear Nebuchadnezzar saying, God has delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies. Yielded body. Somebody's living here with a yielded body. Yeah. The world torments others in the world can't come near you. Yeah. Yielded body. Yielded body. Yielded body. We had a, an experience in our home in those early days of our marriage. We woke up in the morning and said, everybody painted white. Why? Smallpox invaded the premises. <laughs> and everybody was whitewashed. <laughs> Only in my home, there was no white paint. <laughs> Yielded their bodies. Yielded their bodies. The story was told of John G. Lake in those days of bubonic uh, plague in South Africa. Anybody that had a contact with the foam from the mouth of a victim catches it. And here was John G. Lake, he would use his hand and wear it, in the name of Jesus be healed. <laughs> and they wonder why he would not be caught by it. And so they tested the foam from the mouth of the victim. It has all the Bacteria, the germs in it. And they tested the one in the, from the hand of John G. Lake. All the germs were dead. He had a yielded body. I have a new body. Praise the Lord. I have a new life. I used to be a member of the choir. <laughs> I have a new life. Have a new life. I have. Praise the Lord. I have a new life. I had one very baritone choir master. It was fantastic. He could sing all the parts. <laughs> and sing them well. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So there are yielded bodies. It's one of the gifts of re resurrection. Yielded bodies. The fiery furnace has no power. Boiling oil has no power. Coronavirus has no power. <laughs> I have a new body. Praise the Lord. I have a new life. Have a new life. 
have a new body. Praise the Lord. I have a new life. I have a new life. Have a new body. Praise the Lord. Well, you have to pay me for that. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Why you are going home with your new body? Everybody under the sound of my voice around the nations of the world, your new body is delivered now. Everyone's struggle over sickness and disease is finally over today. Number six, resurrection unveils access to God's plan and purpose for our lives. In John chapter 16 and verse 8 to 10, the man that appeared to Paul in a vision was Jesus. <laughs> Go over to Macedonia. That's where your assignment is. He had a, a most impactful ministry in Macedonia. You could see references to those Macedonian churches all across his epistles. His plans are unveiled through the power of his resurrection. We saw his encounter with the resurrected Christ in Acts chapter 9 and reference again in Acts chapter 22. Amen. So, so, why persecuted thou me? Who art thou, Lord? I'm the resurrected Christ. Whom thou persecuted. Now, you are going to pay for it. You suffer, you suffer plenty of things for me. Amen. Amen. So, expect diverse encounters beginning from today and for the next 40 days. Amen. Showing you details of things to do. Showing you what next. Showing you how. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. When Jesus rose from the dead, he met Simon, Simon, do you love me? Say, yes. You better drop that nonsense. Go after my love. Mm. <laughs> do you love me? He said, I love you, Lord. He said, stop that nonsense. Go after my shield. You know, it's not long when he said, I'm going to fishing. He was going back to his fishing profession. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Do you really love me? This is my plan for you. You won't misinvest your energy anymore. Amen. You won't misinvest your time anymore. Amen. He obeys his plans and purpose. The resurrection power. Unveils God's plan and purpose for us. Number seven. Resurrection releases believers from all forms of captivities. The graves were opened. And all the bodies of the saints that slept arose and came out of the grave after his resurrection. And I went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Everybody under the sound of my voice today, yes. you are coming out of obscurity into the limelight. Amen. Can't you hear the chains falling? Mm. Amen. Amen. You are out of that grave today. Amen. You are out of that bandage today. Amen. You are out of that captivity today. Amen. Resurrection opens the graves of people. Your own graves are open. Amen. The grave of stagnation Amen. and frustration. Amen. The graves of failure and defeat. Amen. The graves of spares and enchantment. Amen. 
The grave of hereditary diseases. The grave of generational causes. The grave of sickness and disease. The grace of satanic oppressions and afflictions. Your graves are open. Your graves are open. That is the raw interpretation of the opening of the graves. Number eight, resurrection offers peace that passes all understanding. When Jesus came out of the grave, John 20 and verse 18, all the way to 21. Mary Magdalene came and told them that he has seen the Lord and that uh, he has spoken these things unto her. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week today, Hallelujah. when the doors were shut, yes. when you get to your room and the doors are shut, expect to see him. Amen. We are disciples who are assembled for fear of the Jews. Came Jesus. And stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. When he also said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my father sent me, so send I you. The kind of peace that is fast asleep on a pillow in the midst of the storms. As my father has sent me as the prince of peace, so send I you to manifest as the prince of peace in your world. The people can't explain where your peace is coming from, but they can't doubt the serenity of your life. The calmness, the coolness, the unperturbedness. That you are, you are just there. It's beyond human explanation. Do I have a witness here today? The peace that is beyond human explanation. The peace that passes all knowledge. Philippians 4, 7. That keeps our hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. I got peace like a river. Peace like a river. I got peace like a river. My soul, I got peace like a river. And peace like a river. I got peace like a river. I got joy. I joy. Like a river, I've got joy. Like a river in my soul. I got joy. Like a river, I've got joy. Like a river, I've got joy. Like a river in my soul. Like an ocean coming out. I've got peace like an ocean. I've got peace like an ocean. I've got peace like an ocean in my soul. I've got peace like an ocean. I've got peace like an ocean. I've got peace like an ocean in my soul. Give Jesus a beer. I don't pray. Thank you, Jesus. Resurrection offers peace like an ocean. Inexhaustible peace. Peace that is always there. It comes in billows. Waves after waves. Amen. 
free from anxieties. Hallelujah. Free from the fear of unknown. Amen. You are living here with us. Everybody that is connected to this broadcast, the peace of God that passes all human explanations and understanding is living here with you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Finally, and listen very carefully. Resurrection the positions believers for dominion. In the race of life. Dominion in the race of life. Ephesians 2, 5 and 6. The Bible says, even when we were dead in sins, had quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. And every saved soul has been raised up together and made to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So salvation has repositioned us from the earthly realm to the heavenly realm. Hallelujah. Ephesians 1, 17 to 21 helps us to see what this looks like. Paul praying saying for the official church that the God our Lord, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, and what is the riches, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us all to know. Who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come. Oop, 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 oop. Verse 22. And has put all things. How many things? Oh. Under his feet. And gave him to be the head over all things. To the church. Ah. That's the place where resurrection has repositioned you and I. Amen. Amen. Far above all oh, principality and power and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And as has put all things, including Satan and all his cohorts, under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Romans 16, 20. He said, the Lord shall breed Satan under your feet shortly. Where is Satan now? Now, say with confidence. Where is Satan now? Satan is under your feet now. He's there at your mercy. You can bruise him at will. Stop that nonsense. Stop. Amen. Amen. I saw that in 79. It turned my life forever. You know what's exciting, what the devil can't handle? The word of God lives and abides forever. I got that from Smith Wigglesworth, but he was already dead then. I never saw him in my life. Every revelation 
transcends generations. Yes, sir. Come on now. Every revelation is to bring us into the place where it has placed the people that shared it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When I caught Matthew 6 at the 3 from uh, Oswald J. Smith of People's Church in Toronto, he was in heaven then. He had gone to heaven. Every word from God lives and abides forever. 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 Till we come in the unity of faith unto a perfect man, unto the fullness of the statue of Christ. That's the ministry of apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists. By their light, we see light. And the light gave us the same experience with. All harassment of Satan was silenced in my life since 1979. Praise God. Hallelujah. When you call yourself an agent of the devil, I see you like a rat. There is nothing in you that poses a threat to me because I've seen where God has repositioned me far above. And I see where the truth has positioned you under my feet. So there is no way you can pose a threat to my life. Somebody's destiny is settled. Amen. Say with me, resurrection. resurrection. Has repositioned me, me for dominion, for dominion. In, the in the race of life. Resurrection, resurrection. has repositioned me reposition. for, dominion for dominion in the race of life. Resurrection, Resurrection has repositioned me for dominion in the race of life. Dominion over sin and Satan. Dominion over sickness and disease. Dominion over frustration and stagnation. Dominion over failure and defeat. Dominion over spells and enchantment. Dominion, dominion over hereditary diseases, over hereditary diseases. Dominion, dominion over generational causes, over generational causes. Redemption, redemption has offered me a change of story, change of story. Through, the through the mystery of resurrection, of resurrection. Thank, you, jesus. thank you jesus thank you jesus every name that is named every name that is named, every name that is named. including coronavirus, including coronavirus. <laughs> they are under my feet they are under my feet. Every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, is under my feet. I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and dominion. And every name that is named. Not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Give him a restoration shout of hallelujah. Amen. You know, in those early basic science days, they say matter is, cannot be created nor destroyed. I think Jesus is that matter. <laughs> Amen. He has put all things under his feet. All things. Whether you like it or not, Jesus is reigning forever and forever. All judgments have been committed to his hand. He holds the keys of hell and of death in his hand. All yes. oh, powers in heaven and on earth have been given to me. Well, you take all from anything, what remains? Nothing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In summary this morning, we saw how resurrection offers us a seven-fold redemptive package. 
which covers all things that makes for life and godliness. Revelation 5 verse 9 all the way to 12. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seas thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us unto our God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. There are no racial discriminations in the kingdom. Same price is paid over every soul. Same price. Same blood price. Same assets. No tribal discrimination. No racial discrimination. No national discrimination. The Christian world is one world. The redemptive world is one word. There's not first world, second world, and third world developing and other developed. The kingdom of God is a one world kingdom. One world kingdom. One world kingdom. And as the dream of our God, as priests and kings, and we shall reign on the earth from every kindred, from every tribe, from every nation. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders. The number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. <laughs> and say with a loud voice, what is the lamb that was slain? And as he ascended to heaven, he received for us because he gave, came down from heaven to give gifts unto men. Power. Matthew 28 verse 18. Luke 10 verse 19, to tread upon serpents and scorpions, no matter the pass of the enemy, nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Riches. The rich rules over the poor. Praise God. And the borrower is servant to the lender. So for us to reign, he has to enrich us. He became poor that with rich poverty might be made rich. And wisdom. He redeemed us as priests, kings and priests to reign. And by wisdom kings reign. So, he came down with the gift of wisdom. All right. So, you are going back home with the gift of wisdom. You are going out of this live broadcast with the gift of wisdom. Amen. The gift of riches. Amen. The gift of power. Amen. And then he gave us strength. Amen. So, we can live like him. Mountain or with wings like the eagles. Himself took our infirmity and bore our sicknesses. By whose stripes we were healed. Amen. So he came down with the gift of health and vitality. And then honor. We saw this prophetic scripture in chapter 25 of Isaiah and verse 6 to 8. And in this month it shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of far things. A feast of wines on the lees, of fat things full of marrow, of wines on the lees, well refined. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of covering, cast over all nations. We saw that, how the bay was turned into twain. He will swallow up death in victory. Amen. He did that in resurrection. And the Lord will wipe away tears from all four faces. And the reproach of his people shall he take away from off the earth, for the Lord has spoken it. Come and give the Lord praise. Well, every grave of shame and reproach is open today. Amen. No one here will suffer shame and reproach anymore Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And then glory. Glory to God. That is a product of revelation. As you behold him as in a glass, we are changed from glory to glory, from glory to glory into the same image as by the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And blessings. Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the Lord by being made a cause for us, to cause everyone that hang it upon the tree. That the causes of life might be replaced with the blessings of Abraham. That blessing is with a seal. I will bless them that bless thee and he that cutters thee. I will cause. I will cause. I will cause. I will cause. 
I will cause. I will cause. That's the kind of blessing. Irreversible blessing. How shall I defy whom the Lord has not defied? Or how shall I cause whom God has not caused? Numbers 23 verse 8. I have received the commandment to bless. Verse 20. And he has blessed and I cannot reverse it. Irreversible blessing is a blessing that came along with resurrection. One of the gifts of resurrection. Can I hear your amen? amen? Many years ago, the Lord showed me from Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18, the light, part of the light, righteous light, a shining light that shines more and more onto the perfect day. He said, I have not designed lives for ups and downs, but for ups and ups. Amen. Ups and ups. Amen. Amen. We have never known a better yesterday in our ministry up till now. You'll never know a better yesterday again. Amen. Every year shall be a plus on the previous. Amen. That shall become your new lifestyle. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We should all therefore expect every grave that may have shortened any area of our life to be opened. Amen. Within the next 40 days, yes, you are manifesting the fullness of the gifts of resurrection Amen. in every area of your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. When Jesus came from the grave, rose from the grave, among the first things he did was to serve the communion to his disciples. And their eyes were opened. And they knew him. At this communion table today, your spiritual eyes will be opened. Amen. Into new realms of revelation. Amen. Changing your story from glory to glory. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. He served them the communion for strength. For strength. Therefore, every weakness, every sickness, every threat to life comes to an end in your life today. Amen. Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. John 6 53 and 54. Whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. I will preserve his spirit. I will open up his spiritual understanding. And I will keep his body supernaturally fit. For as the living father has sent me and I live like the father. For whosoever has seen me, I see my father. So he that eateth me shall live like me. Amen. His body was immune to sickness and disease. He was a wisdom and the power of God. He knew no sin. He had no spiritual disease. Amen. Amen. He who knew no sin became sin for us. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your right hand and give God thanks. Give him thanks. Give him praise. Celebrate his faithfulness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Just before we proceed to partake of this mystery called the communion table, I want to give an opportunity to anyone that is under the sound of my voice around the nations of the world today that is here to be saved. Except a man is born again, he cannot enjoy or experience the provisions in redemption. You like me to pray with you to be saved? And then I have another class of people that need to rededicate their life to Christ today and begin to walk in the newness of life and enjoy the best that redemption offers. Whichever class you fall into, you like me to pray with you this morning to be born again to be restored back to the faith, please lift up your right hand to heaven as I lead you in this simple prayer of faith. Would you pray this prayer with me? Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I open the door of my heart to you today. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. 
I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again. That I may be justified. Right now. I believe. My sins are now forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. And I accept you as my Lord. And my Savior. I believe. I'm now saved. I'm restored back to the faith. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Amen. Amen. Now, be blessed of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Amen. I cover each of you with the blood of Jesus. You shall not miss your steps. Grace to live an overcomer's life is yours today. You will make heaven at the end of your journey. May the blessings of resurrection locate you today. And come upon your life afresh. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Congratulations. Let's give the Lord a big hand of praise. Please share your testimony of salvation with us. It's the greatest miracle of all miracles. Amen. Amen. We we'll would like to be part of your joy and help us of your faith. Please share that with us on the testimony lines earlier given to you. And we'll be glad to glorify God on your behalf. Amen. Shall we rise? Amen. Amen. Give him glory. Give him glory. If you are sure of your gifts today, give him glory. You are sure of your gifts today, give him glory. You are sure of your gifts today, give him glory. He ascended on high and gave gifts unto men. Amazing gifts that covers all things that make for life and godliness. To him be praised. Please get seated and let's receive the epistle as the Holy Ghost is preparing us for a lifetime encounter. Amen. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Celebration Sunday to all winners worldwide in Jesus' name. Please let's listen to this epistle from the Apostle over this commission, titled, Declaring for...